Hello Kitchen Stitchers, this is Arlene and Chef Dave and it's still March and we're coming to you from our kitchen and happy to join you in yours or wherever you like to stitch. Um, we've got some things on our agenda today based on some questions you all have had and thank you for the very um, fun comments that you've left and the encouragement you give to David. He had a, uh, I dragged him to our stitch stop week, two weeks ago and when he walked in, he was so surprised how many people recognized him at the stitch shop. That was kind of fun. <laughs> um, so I have, I don't have any finishes. Um, I do have a little stash that I forgot to pull out. So I'll do that while you're talking. I have something to give away because I had a duplicate. I have some work in progress and we're going to talk a little bit about steak steak and I'm going to show you something that I do with baking so we'll have a whole little mix just as a quick aside I'm kind of really sorry we didn't take advantage of um, St. Patrick's Day my mom is 100% Irish and so it's a it's a big celebration around our house um, I have not usually been one for uh, Irish soda bread uh, but I have a friend who makes it and had a recipe and I was going to try that but before I got that recipe um, I found this so it's by King Arthur's flour and you can buy this online and so I made that fresh that looked backwards didn't it yeah yeah well that's okay but I made it fresh and it was really yummy it was really yummy fresh out of the oven a little bit of butter on it even the next day it tasted really good it was crusty on the outside and soft on the inside so look I'm gonna talk a little bit more about King Arthur's flour a little bit later but King Arthur's, I'll look it up. It's either kingarthursflower.com or just kingarthurs.com. So, you want to talk about steak while I go get some of the things, other things that I forgot to pull out? Sure. Okay. So tonight, we're having uh, some nice strip steak that Arlene found at the store the other day. And so, I, since we're having it tonight, I thought I would talk about, um, not the best way, perhaps, but a really good way of cooking steak. Um, it's kind of foolproof. Um, one thing about cooking steak is that, or cooking any kind of meat, is um, uh, it's best to have the outside browned. And there's a reason for that. Uh, when you brown the meat, it's um, there's something called the Maillard reaction, that uh, the proteins in the meat become untwined and uh, it releases um, sugars and flavors and that gets all kind of mixed together on the, on the surface of the meat, um, which is why we don't boil meat anymore. Um, this reaction was um, discovered, I believe, sometime back in the 50s. I could be wrong about that, but it was, it was a while ago. But um, so anyway, uh, to cook a steak, uh, if you're not going to put it on a, on, a, on a hot grill outside or um, if you don't have a griddle on the inside your house, uh, use a. Uh, I'm going to be using a small frying pan, uh, nonstick, uh, and I'll use. Most of the time, I'll use a little bit, uh, about maybe a, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of olive oil, and um, maybe a teaspoon, just like a pat of butter, uh, in it for for flavor, and. Uh, so I'll, I'll melt that down into the pan, and uh, when I season the steak, if a good steak really shouldn't take too much seasoning, so I will just put some uh, kosher salt and some ground, fresh ground pepper on both sides. And when the, uh, the, sta when the uh, skillet starts getting hot enough, um, you don't want it to smoke, you don't want the butter to turn brown, um, but when it gets um, to the point where it's uh, all the sizzling has stopped from the butter. Uh, put your steak into the butter and let it sit. And let it do what it needs to do on that side. And every once in a while you can take your tongs and you turn it up and you can see if it's starting to brown. When it gets to be a nice brown, then you can turn it over. Now here's where it gets tricky. Um, if the steak is, is rather thick, it may take a while to get cooked through. Um, so here's, here's where your oven comes in. Um, you turn your oven on to uh, a low broil, like 425, 450. On broil, not bake? On broil, not bake. Um, 
You want the heat coming down from above. You want it direct onto the meat. Um, so as soon as you turn your meat over into the skillet, um, you take take yourself a, um, a tablespoon and kind of spoon the, the oil butter mixture over top of it. Now here's a good time too to take some of your fresh crushed garlic and put that into the oil butter mixture and spoon some of that over top of the over top of the steak. Now as soon as you get that done, take it off the fire, put it in the oven, and you want to go probably about four minutes. So how do you know the steak is done? That's a big question. Um, there's the touch method, which a lot of guys that are in the restaurant business will use and if you if you take your hand and you make a fist don't squeeze too tight but just make a, a light fist if you take your finger and you push push here you'll feel it's kind of soft if you touch the top of the steak and it feels like that it's going to be rare if you move around to your first knuckle that's going to be medium and if you move it around to the last knuckle that's well done and probably gonna you're starting to dry out the steak um, but people like my mom like it that way so it's good to know true <laughs> i put her mother's steak on 10 minutes before i put ours on and leave it on for an extra five afterwards <clears throat> so you pull the steak out you do the touch method now if you want a more precise method um, you can get yourself a um, a food thermometer at the grocery store they're anywhere from a couple of bucks to you can get the really expensive ones up to like 10 bucks 20 bucks and uh, you want it if you want medium rare to medium or me, rare to medium rare um, your internal temperature needs to be about 120 125 uh, anything higher than that up to 130 you're starting to get into the medium range and any higher than that I'm gonna tell you to stop because <laughs> you're gonna ruin your nice steak so you pull your steak out get it off of the pan because the pan's still hot it will steep it will keep cooking there's something called carryover cooking um, it'll keep cooking itself uh, even though it's not under heat for another few minutes so get it off the pan get it onto a plate and let it sit there just leave it alone don't poke at it don't try to cut into it just leave it alone um, after that, you'll see you'll see some of the uh, the juices will come out of the, perhaps the bottom of the steak, and as it cools and it stops cooking itself, those juices will kind of reabsorb back up into the steak. So that's kind of it for for uh, for steaks. Pretty easy, pretty quick. The other thing he does, which is delightful, is he deglazes the pan sometimes oh, with a little yeah. bit of sherry or a little bit of wine and. It's just a little bit of a taste. It's not too much like a heavy sauce, and then we'll pull, put that over. Yeah, you deglaze it with a with a sherry or, or a red wine with the beef, um, and let that uh, let that reduce. You don't want it to be too thin. You so you put what like about a half a cup or a quarter oh, cup? Oh, not even quarter cup. Um, just enough. A couple to, tablespoons. Just enough to cover the bottom of uh -huh. the pan and lift all the stuff up off the bottom because it's it. that's um, that's. Flavor. That's good stuff, yeah. That's flavor. Yeah, especially some of the leftover garlic. The leftover garlic really adds a lot to it. It's so good. It's so good. We're having steak tonight. I'm getting really, really <laughs> hungry. <laughs> so yeah, then just when you get it reduced down to a kind of a, almost a syrup, then you can you spoon it over top of the over the steak. Now while I can, I continue, I'm going to tilt our camera that way because he's going to start cooking our steak. So you can be very jealous of us eating a really good meal tonight. Um, but you'll see some of that in the background as he's doing some of that stuff. So, do you have anything to add? Um, there were a couple questions, though, about a knife block. Oh, somebody asked what a knife block is for. Um, pretty simple. Uh, it's a place to keep your knives. But the thing I find that is interesting is you don't always dry the knives off really well. You just no. stick them in the block. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really picky about my knives. And um, my knives, are most of them I had through culinary school. So, I'm... I'm really particular about them. Um, she's getting on me because I'm touching the table and shaking. <laughs> yes, and um, you're not yelling at me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> um, 
when I cl when I clean the knives, I'll I'll put them under really hot water and I'll kind of scrub them off and uh, make sure they're clean. And then I'll stick them back in the block because the block will absorb the water. And I've never had a problem with the with the knives rusting or anything. Well, and and he's really good, and he's trained me to don't just stick him in the sink. Just wash him off right then, stick him right in the block. So never, our block is right near our sink. Never ever ever put your knives your 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 cutting knives into a sink full of dishwater. Or a dishwasher. Well, yeah, dishwasher will ruin a knife. But if um, if you work in a, in a professional kitchen and you put a knife in a soapy a sink full of soapy water you're gonna get cut you're gonna get fired oh <laughs> cut as in let go yeah okay because the poor guy who's gonna reach in there and he's pulling stuff out of there he's gonna grab a hold of it and he's gonna cut get his hurt. hand hurt yeah okay so yeah and the knife and the knife block is good it keeps your knives organized um you know what knife is where and you know where to reach you don't have to to look into your pull out your knife drawer and go sorting through all your different knives and stuff and I, I keep just a very small assortment of knives out um, I have a couple of knives that I don't use very often and I keep them put away in another room so yeah. never use them yeah all right well thank you chef Dave was there any other questions oh let me look um, we had a lot of comments about meatloaf clearly I am in the minority when it comes to meatloaf and there were some people that had some good idea Darla uses Ritz or stuffing mix in her meatloaf instead of bread. That sounds interesting if you like meatloaf. Doesn't work for me, but that's all right. Um, Angela Meyer uses ground turkey, so that makes it a little healthier. That, that's really mm -hmm. good. That's I'll have to say, Mom, I'm sorry. It's your fault that I don't like meatloaf. Hers, she loves her meatloaf. It is not my thing. Not my thing. I think I just don't like the taste of um, baked hamburger. I never have. Add a lot of Italian stuff to it, and I'm all fine with that. But uh, yeah, just baked hamburger by itself with some of that doesn't do my thing. What about cleaning a cutting board and best type of cutting board? Um, well, in school we all use the uh, we use Teflon boards. Um, they're plastic, heavy duty, and we even had different color boards for cutting different different items. Um, that was for sanitation reasons. You're not supposed to use a a board that you've cut fish on and then turn around and cut vegetables on it. Um, it's just bad sanitation. But with you, if you're at home um, and you're using a plastic board or a Teflon board, uh, they're the easiest to keep clean. Um, you can just wash them off with a hot soap and water and hit them with a... Um, a Clorox wipe, anything that's got bleach in it, that'll that'll kill anything that gets on them. But I prefer a a wooden cutting board just because I like the feel of the wood cutting board, and it also raises up off the table a couple of inches, and that uh, it makes it easier for me to cut. And those I I just wipe off again with hot soapy water, and I hit them. There's a there's a cutting board lotion, like an oil. It's like a cream. Mm -hmm. Um, he he takes cool. really good care. I, I ended up buying him a wooden cutting board that's about that thick just because he's tall and our counters aren't that tall and that helps it bring it up a little bit so he's not hunched over and bothering his back and shoulders and necks and that works for him. So I, mean, I, I, think, I don't think there's any big difference between that and anything else except it raises your, your cutting surface. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you also want to put something underneath it that's going to keep your board from sliding around. I have a, a piece of uh, rubber... Um, matting that's used in uh, to keep rugs. Uh, yeah, some people they use for rugs. This stuff is it was made for um, toolbox drawers to uh -huh. keep stuff from sliding around. Mm -hmm. um, at school, we use a, uh, a wet paper towel. We just use a couple of paper towels temporary. and get them wet and just throw them down underneath it, and it keeps it from sliding. That's a good idea. So tip number two. That, that's that's the, it for Chef Dave here. Um, there were some tips or they want tips for crock pot. I don't think that we have any big tips for crock pot, but later next one of these other videos, I'm going to make him share his recipe for wings because he made wings in the Instapot and said they were the best ever. Right. Yeah, they were pretty good. So we'll share that at another time. Um, but who who was this? It was Nevada Stitcher. She does her cheesecake in the crock pot, which was okay. news to me. That sounds kind of interesting, so we'll have to get her to share with us. Um, before David leaves and starts cooking a yummy dinner, I, I, I had to laugh. 
because one of the things that I, I, I can be a pack rat over are, are boxes. So if I get a good box, I, you know, I like to wrap things nicely for Christmas and a good box is really good for that. And so we have like a whole two set, uh, set and a half of, of shelves in the basement that have boxes. You know, they stop giving boxes away at Christmas sometimes. Start. Yeah, five shelves, but they're small shelves. So anyway, he got a belt today or today. today. And look at this box. Isn't this an awesome box? It's got a little pull. And it goes back in, I'm thinking, oh, and it's really solid and sturdy. I'm thinking, oh, I could do some stitching and mount it on the top of this, and that would be really cool. And I know there are some of you out there who would agree with me. So you can let David know I'm not crazy. So <laughs> he's very patient. I just have to add that. Okay. So no more questions? No more questions right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually start talking about some stitching, stitching. while you do. Uh, so we'll switch seats and you can go, okay. go cook. It's so nice to have a chef in the house. Okay, so a couple of things from me. Um, I, I kind of felt like I wasn't, I, I've gotten pretty far with this. I just have to finish up the back stitching, the outlining, and the, um, the French knots. I think the French knots under this guy is going to make him look like he's got suds coming out of the bottom of the pail. So it, that's kind of fun, but uh, I like to do French knots, so that doesn't bother me. If you do, the, then that might be something you, you don't like to do, but I promise you, after you do all the French knots you need for here, you'll be really good at French knots. So, uh, But they look so cute. Um, so I actually, because I, I wanted to do something else, I started doing um, a couple of other things. I had a couple of starts. So I got... I got this uh, from the Stitchery catalog because I have a friend who is a, um, a real sewer. She's a seamstress and she's amazing and she's been a best friend of mine since seventh grade. And uh, she, um, she and my, her kids and my kids grew up together and Aunt Lisa always took her camping. If you know me very well, I am not an outdoorsy kind of person. Camping for me is going to be um, Holiday Inn. I'm going to move so you can start seeing David when he starts. Breaking doing. a nail, dialing roof service is roughing. Yes, breaking a nail, dialing roof service is as rough as I want to get it. Uh, so, so anyway, I got this and I started it. I kind of, you know, I, I haven't done much with um, cross stitch kits like from Stitchery just because um, uh, they usually include Ada, but. Uh, I had uh, plenty of linen at home, but what I really liked was, you know, it, re it, it automatically includes everything, um, all the, the, the thread that you need to do this, and uh, it's just there. So they gave me this Ada. If anybody wants this white 14 count Ada, um, it is big enough for 14 0.4 inches by 7.2 inches so it's going to have some selvage around that so if you want it you just let me know and I will be happy to send you the Ada so just say Ada in your comments so this is as far as I got stitching that so far but I, I think the bright colors are fun I'm a little afraid that I didn't give it a, a, as an, enough room on here but um, we'll see I think I'm a little short on this edge but I'm going to turn it into a pillow so that shouldn't be a horrible horrible thing um and then I got started, I wanted to do March in March. So I took a day, an evening, and I finished my heart in hand, hands-on design, sorry, hands-on design month of March. So that's what March looks like from hands-on design. And that was quick to stitch and it was a lot of fun. And I like, the, again, the bright colors. Um, I have a spring break coming up uh, close to um, Easter, obviously, for us here, which is usually the end of March before in the district that I used to be part of, but now it's the end of April, so uh, I'm going to see if I can mount those. Uh, I have a little clipboard that it'll hold to. And last but not least, this is kind of fun. You know, I showed you the, the box that I got this from Faithworks Design. And I'm really excited about that. I've had another thing that I never actually really finished, but I was so excited about it. I've got to pull it out. It was for Christmas, and it was uh, associated with a little box. But um, Faithworks, if you've never seen their designs, she's just really good, or they're just really good about 
creating the unusual. It's not just stitching, it's the finishing, which I think is just the coolest thing ever. So um, I started stitching it. And then last night, after I finished this little house here, I realized I stitched it two, one row, two rows, two, three rows over to the left too far. So now I have to rip that all out. So that's a bummer, but I want to do it right. So I'm going to do that. Um, but that's a quick stitch. But the, the exciting thing is um, she watched this video. And when I brought this up, she was really excited to see that people were excited about this. So she sent me a message and asked if I would be interested in her sending some of her designs for me to give away. And of course, my answer was absolutely. I absolutely love her designs. They're a lot of fun, but again, it's the fun part is, is the, the way to finish it. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. And uh, when I get that from her, I will be happy to pass those on to you. So very, very, very fun. Um, I think that's all of my works in progress. Uh, I am waiting for some fabric to come in on this. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in, um, in a white or uh, kind of a pinkish background. I have a very kind of fun fabric for that. So once the white comes in, I'll compare. Um, but I got two of these. I didn't realize I had two of these. So if you would like this, it's uh, the Trilogy Spring. So you can just put spring in, um, in the comments and I will we'll pull a, a name for the next time and then we can, uh, I'll send that out to you. Um, I have gotten back from people that have received the giveaways from last time that uh, Darla received hers. Um, someone else told me they received hers. I think the book was received, so that was good. I was worried about that because that was a big package. And we'll, one of the winners, um, oh my gosh, she was from New Zealand. New Zealand, this is kind of exciting. That's, I think, the really fun thing about Floss Tube is that this stitching community is global. And it's so fun to have um, some interactions with people that aren't from the United States and to, uh, to hear some of the different stories about what they do, how they stitch. Uh, I love to share that. Speaking of um, uh, how to stitch, I had a couple of questions come my way um, about how I stitch. So one was, what is my favorite stitch count? And I, I have started to like the smaller stitch counts. So 32 is probably my go-to. Um, 36, I, I'll go for 36 if I can. Um, I've stitched one at 40 um, and I actually really liked it. I, uh, I like 40 better than going over one um, for some things. So 40 gives me that small enough feel and it's not hard to stitch. I do stitch with a, um, a stand lamp that goes on the floor. It can be converted to sit on a table. It goes on the floor. My favorite stitch spot is this big comfy chair in our family room and it's a double wide. So you know, David can come over and sit next to me if he's cold. And, uh, and then uh, I can keep him warm because I, I usually am pretty warm, especially when I sleep. But Anyway, if he gets cold, I'm usually probably pretty hot or I'm hot flashing in a second and he'll get really hot as soon as that starts happening. Um, so I have the stand lamp and it's not an ot light, but it, it, it has a magnifying um, window about this big and it's lit all the way under the bottom and I can turn it in any way. So I usually have it sitting in front of me here and I'm stitching and watching TV and um, that's kind of my favorite thing. I went for years um, while my daughter was little I didn't really cross stitch very much and probably about I did a lot in high school and then in, in college um, and then after she was born I pretty much stopped and then in 1996 I picked it up a little bit and then really went full bore with it probably about 10 years ago um, and and I was so surprised when I picked it back up how much my eyes had changed <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was horrible. I guess that's where you tell how uh, life is, is moving along because you know I haven't changed clearly, but uh, my eyes have. Um, so the, the, the lamp is a really good thing for me and even especially if my eyes are tired. I can stitch without it, but that extra light and just it lets me be more precise with my, um, my stitches. And I find that I'm really more careful about what my X's look like because um, it depends on the way I pull my thread. It, it can go at a slant or not, and I may not be aware of it. Um, I tend to like to, if I can do it, um, 
do uh, my cross on one way and then come back. And I never used to like to do that before. I would just stitch the X. Um, but I find that the X looks better if I can do it that way. They're more uniform. So that, that's a thing for me. Let's see if there's another question out there that somebody had. I think that was pretty much it. Um, one of the things I'm hoping to do, I have some ideas for creating some designs. I created my own stockings and they're really unusual and actually comes from my grandmother, um, the idea. She did something completely different, but um, I think I might create uh, stocking designs um, maybe this summer when I have some time off to, um, to float it by y'all and see if you like that, if it's something you'd enjoy. I just, it's been in the back of my head to create those designs probably ever since I dabbled with creating the, um, the tall guys. So it's, it's fun to do some creative things. So I'm going to try that. Uh, I did want to show you some stuff that I got. Um, I ended up through the stitch, um, st stitch catalog. I said his catalog name earlier. Um, it, my head went blank, but I went and I purchased the Etoile um, DMC, and the reason I did that is it says, you know, if you just want a little sparkle, it's just like regular DMC, um, the way you use the threads, but it's a little bit sparkly, so if you want to add a little sparkle to it, uh, then that's what I purchased. So I'm kind of excited at some point to be able to add some sparkle into the stitching without necessarily having to do that with Krynik. Uh, so we'll see how that works uh, and it was you know it wasn't too bad uh, so anyway that was fun then the last couple of things that I had I have a cousin who's my daughter's age so she's really more like a niece uh, she is pregnant and she's gonna have a little boy so I got this and I'm gonna be making that for her and again, I'm happy to send off this uh, DMC, not DMC, Ada, to whoever wants that. So when you guys put Ada in there, um, I'll, I'll pull that. And then I got this because this little thing is just so cute. So uh, I'll be stitching that. And then the last two things was, I'm always looking for something sewy like for a buddy of mine who is the seamstress. And so I might make this into a pin cushion for her. And then the last thing, it's been a long time. When I started stitching, I was eight or nine, and I had hurt, I was a dancer, and I had hurt, I think I was nine, and I hurt my hip, and so I had to be in bed for a week or so. And the lady who used to teach me Highland dancing brought me over a cruel kit. And so I stitched a pillow with cruel. And I haven't done that in a while, cruel embroidery. Um, so I, I ended up getting a table runner that I just thought was really pretty. And so sometime maybe this summer, I'm gonna start that table runner. But I think that'll be fun to stitch, just something a little different than cross stitch, so. Um, then the last thing before I leave you, I told you I'm a baker. Um, the best part about baking, what makes you, I think, sometimes a good baker is having good recipes. And so I, whenever I find a good recipe, I make sure that I get it and uh, cling to it. And I'll share some of those as we go along. But in, in the, sometimes there are things that you can make like Ghirardelli brownies, Ghirardelli box brownies. The double chocolate, I think, are the best. And so I just make those. I don't try to make from scratch because I can't replicate that. Um, but this King Arthur flour, I'll tell you what, I, um, I bought this scone mix from them and it's a vanilla raspberry. And I'll tell you, whenever I make these, people just rave over them. Yeah, David likes them too. I have to take them to work on a regular basis for this one person because she just she'll, she just eats them. But what I do, I'll usually do something extra when I have a, a box mix. So I bought their raspberry jammy bits. And you can see they're not very big, and I'll throw an extra handful or two in with those. And then, of course, then I brought the, the sparkling sugar, which is just like a big coarse sugar, and it goes on top. And you bake that all up. When that comes out of the oven with a little bit of butter on him, oh, yeah. it's really good. So, yeah, he's a happy boy. He never used to like sweets. He blames it all on me. So uh, I've given him a little bit of sweet tooth. <laughs> well, it's only fair. If he's making me fat with all the yummy stuff he makes, it's only fair that I can make him um, happy with uh, some of the sweet stuff. 
So anyway, that's that's it for us uh, this week. And uh, thank you again for all your comments. I love hearing from everybody and what they're doing. And uh, uh, it's just, that's what makes us so fun is just to have that uh, exchange. So thank you for all your support and all your love and for making David feel so welcome. Uh, we hope you have a great week and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.